negotiated with Martin Lando and Barbara Bain. At first we met with them, showed them a feature film I had made, and they were very keen to do the series. Then their agent stepped in and said, OK, guys, if you want these two, you do not talk to them again until you've signed a contract. Lou had said to us, look, I've gone along with you all this time, but not a penny more. So we were sunk. They were sitting by the pool, and Abe Mandel said to me, Jerry, it's five o'clock here, so it's, what of time, you know, 11 o'clock in London, and Lou always goes to bed at nine. I, we daren't ring him, but how can we let the series go down? And then suddenly he stood up and said, to hell with it, I'm going to ring Lou. And then I heard it. I thought, God, he's a great guy here. And then I heard it, Lou's voice. Hello? He said, Lou, I've got Jerry for you. And he put the receiver in my hand. I thought it was just about the dirtiest trick I've ever known. But good old Lou, he didn't get annoyed with me. And I was able to say, this is positively the last thing. If you let us do this, we've got them. And he said, OK, fine. Martin Landau presents himself with a Californian tan, which makes him look handsome and tough. And Barbara Bain presents herself as being all pale and interesting. So they stand them together for a two shot. And you've got one with this dark tan and the other one's white as a sheet. And of course, the film contrast cannot cope with that. And the graders used to <laughs> ring up and say, we can't do this, you know. So uh, we had a wonderful lighting cameraman, but every time there's a two shot, he, he dreaded it. I know that people want me to say bad things about Barbara, but I won't because we had a very civilized working relationship. Uh, I know that there was, well, I was told that there were certain things that she had in her contract to do with my character, to do with Catherine Schell, uh, that I was never allowed to appear as Catherine Schell. And there was one particular script where that did happen, or it should have happened. I was given a script to read, and um, Maya turns into Catherine Schell to, uh, to tease Tony Anhalt, and it was taken out. Next time that I read the script, oops, that scene is gone. And there were other things that I noticed as well, which I'm sure was possibly part of uh, Barbara's, uh, Barbara's contract. The ending of every episode, there is a freeze frame and a close-up of whoever it is on. So it was on Nick, it was on Zena, it was on Barbara, it was on uh, Tony, it was on Martin. It was never on me. The end of the first series was a major landmark in Jerry's life. After nearly 20 years, his relationship with Sylvia came to an end. It was the conclusion to a successful working partnership, a not entirely successful marriage, and the beginning of an acrimonious divorce that would span five years. Terrahawks, stay on this channel. Terrahawks, stay on this channel. I was asked by uh, Abe Mandel in New York if we could use an American writer. Long story, but eventually I said, OK. And I met Fred Freiberger, who died recently, unfortunately, who was uh, a writer on the very first Star Trek. There was one funny story to do with Fred Freiberger, that he did have a, he had a nickname. Uh, he was called the serial killer, because he had actually done that to other series. And he was a very, very nice guy, but he was American. And what I mean by that is we have a different way of thinking. You know, we're separated by a common language, as they say. It was going out uh, more towards, um, you know, the adolescent uh, age group that um, he felt, well, you know, adolescents love monsters, and so um, we're going to stick to monsters on the whole. He came up with ideas that I didn't really approve of, and I didn't like. But he was here, quote unquote, to satisfy the American audience, 
to make it highly saleable in America. And shortly after he arrived, uh, I mean, I got on very well with him, and he was a very nice guy. But I said uh, to him that uh, if you're going to try and turn this show into something else in terms of scripting, then I'm going to appoint you as the producer, because it's only fair. If you turn the show round, or at least that's what you think you're going to do, and make it a huge success in America, then you should be the producer. And if you make a balls on it, you will also be the producer. True to his reputation as the man with a CV where every entry began, the last series of, Fred Freiberger oversaw the second and last series of Space 1999. Space 1999 was the last sunset for the team which had started work together as a small cottage industry in Slough. The last members of the team who had worked with Jerry for so long finally disbanded. Jerry's working relationship with ATV came to an end after 17 years. When Space 1999 finished, third, the Third World War was breaking out at ATV and there were people at work undermining Lou. And Lou became understandably preoccupied with defending his position. And so Lou didn't give me any shows at that time. 